Hello and welcome to Byju's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to the discussion on the daily quiz for the 22nd of May 2022. Beginning with the first question of the day. Which of the following statements is or are correct with respect to the monkey pox disease? Three statements are given here. The first statement reads, the disease has been reported only in monkeys, ape species and humans thus far. The second statement reads, it is caused by a bacterial pathogen. Third statement reads, being a zoonosis, human to human transmission of this disease is not possible. Please have a look at the options. Now what is the context? This article from today's The Indian Express notes the World Health Organization holding an emergency meeting to discuss the recent outbreak of monkeypox. This comes in the backdrop of cases being reported in the US as well as European nations such as Israel. Monkeypox is a disease similar to smallpox but is considered to be less severe. While smallpox has been eradicated globally, monkeypox continues to remain prevalent in certain West and Central African nations. Coming back to the question. Note, as against what is stated in the statement 1, it is not just limited to monkeys, ape species and humans, but it has also been detected in squirrels as well as Gambian poached rats. The statement 1 stands wrong. Also, it is not caused by a bacterial pathogen. It is caused by a virus pathogen belonging to the family of orthopox virus. So, statement 2 is also wrong. Considering statement 3, it is a zoonosis. Now, what do you mean by zoonosis? Zoonosis are those diseases which are transmitted between species. However, human to human transmission of monkeypox disease is possible. Transmission occurs through contact between bodily fluids of a infected person. So, even statement 3 is wrong. So, that leaves us with only option D. None of the above. Please note, the monkeypox disease issue has been covered comprehensively in our big news discussion of the 20th of May. Please do watch this for a better understanding of the monkeypox disease. Moving on to the second question of the day. Consider the following statements with respect to the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation. Three statements are given. It is an intergovernmental forum consisting of 21 member countries. Second statement is, India is a founder member. And the third statement reads, it is headquartered in Manila. Which of the following statement is or are incorrect? Please note, the question asks for incorrect statements. Please have a look at the options. Now, what is the context? This article from today's The Indian Express notes the ongoing Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation meeting in Bangkok. The article notes, representatives from the United States and other nations walking out of the meeting in protest against Russia's invasion of Ukraine. APEC was established in 1989 as a regional economic forum. It seeks to promote free trade and economic cooperation between the member countries. With this basic understanding, let's get back to the question. The first statement which notes APEC being an intergovernmental forum consisting of 21 member countries is correct. Please note, when established, the APEC had only 12 founding members. It was only in the year 1998 when the membership was expanded to have 21 countries. The member countries include those lying along the Pacific Ocean Rim. This includes countries such as China, US, Russia, South Korea, Singapore, Australia and New Zealand among others. Please note, India was neither a founder member nor is it a present member as well. So, statement 2 is wrong. While India has sought membership of the APEC on multiple occasions, its bid has been opposed by member countries such as China. Presently, India has observer status at the APEC. Also, APEC is not headquartered in Manila. It is headquartered at Singapore. So, statement 3 is also wrong. Since the question asks for incorrect statement, the correct answer would be option C, 2 and 3 only. Moving on to the third question. Which of the following are associated with Raja Ram Mohan Roy? There are seven literary works mentioned here. Tohfat ul Muhammadin, Precepts of Jesus, Tazibul Aklak, Sambad Komudi, Gulamgiri, 
Satyarth Prakash and Miratul Akbar. Please have a look at the options given. Let's understand the context. The Ministry of Culture is set to commemorate 250th birth anniversary of Raja Ram Mohan Roy. Note, Raja Ram Mohan Roy was born on the 22nd of May 1772. He is among the most known social and religious reformers of the 19th century. Such was his contribution to social and religious reforms in India. He is also referred to as the father of Indian Renaissance. Raja Ram Mohan Roy is best known for his anti-sati work as well as the founding of an organization such as the Brahmo Samaj as well as the setting up of the Vedanta College. Now this question deals with the literary contributions of Raja Ram Mohan Roy. Tuhufat ul Muhammadin, Percepts of Jesus, Sambat Komudi as well as Miratul Akbar are literary works associated with Raja Ram Mohan Roy. Note, Tuhufat ul Muhammadin is written in Persian. It was one of the earliest works of Raja Ram Mohan Roy. It calls for religious reforms in India. Sambat Komodi was a Bengali weekly newspaper which was founded and edited by Raja Ram Mohan Roy while Miratul Akbar was a Persian journal. Let's understand the other options given. Tazi Bul Aklak was a literary work associated with Sir Syed Hamad Khan. Gulamgiri was associated with Mahatma Jyoti Rao Pule and Satyarth Prakash is a Hindi book written by Maharishi Dayanand Saraswati. So, the correct answer to this question would be option B, 1, 2, 4 and 7. Please note, in such type of questions, it would be very hard to remember all the works associated with a famous personality. So, the best way out to solve such questions would be by the elimination technique. Note, works like the Gulamgiri, Satyarth Prakash, as well as Tazibul Aklak are well-known literary works. So, an aspirant preparing for this exam is expected to know this. Observe, just by knowing these, it would be possible to eliminate options and arrive at the correct answer. By eliminating 5 and 6, you can eliminate C and D. By eliminating option 3, you can eliminate A as well. So, Although a student might not know the exact literary contributions of Raja Ram Mohan Roy, by knowing the other famous literary contributions by other great personalities, we still arrived at the right answer. Moving on to the fourth question of the day. Which of the following statements is or are correct with respect to the Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Yojana? Three statements are given here. Release of LPG connection under this scheme shall be in the name of the woman belonging to the BPL family. The second statement reads, Benefits under the scheme include cash assistance for obtaining gas connections as well as up to 6 free standard size gas cylinders refilling annually. Statement 3 reads, Under the scheme, an adult woman belonging to the aspirational districts automatically qualifies as an eligible beneficiary under the expanded scheme. Please have a look at the options. Now, what is the context? Just yesterday, the union government has announced a 200 rupees subsidy on LPG cylinders for the beneficiaries of the Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Yojana. Note, there are around 9 crore beneficiaries presently under the Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Yojana. The Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Yojana was introduced in the year 2016 by the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas. The scheme envisages making clean cooking fuels available to poor households who are otherwise dependent on traditional cooking fuels like fuel wood, cow dung cakes and so on. Coming back to the question, the Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Yojana under Phase 1 sought to provide deposit-free LPG connections with a financial assistance amounting to around 1,600 to the intended beneficiaries. It had no provisions for providing free gas cylinders. However, the second phase of the Ujwala Yojana did have provisions for the first LPG refill to be free. However, as against what is stated in the statement 2, there is no provisions for six free standard size cylinder refillings. So, statement 2 is wrong. The LPG connection under this scheme would be in the name of the woman. Statement 1 is right. 
this was intended as a measure of women empowerment now look at the third statement the guidelines for the pradhan mantri ujwala yojana mention certain categories of women who would be considered as beneficiaries under the scheme this includes women from sc st other backward classes beneficiaries under the pradhan mantri aawas yojana as well as antyodai anna yojana it also includes forest dwellers and people living in islands note women belonging to aspirational districts do not automatically qualify as an eligible beneficiary so statement 3 is also wrong since the question asked for the correct statement the answer would be c one only moving on to the last question of the day this is a question from the 2019 upsc general studies paper 1 the question reads with reference to the cultivation of karif crops in india in the last 5 years consider the following statements area under rice cultivation is the highest area under the cultivation of jowar is more than that of oil seeds area of cotton cultivation is more than that of sugar cane area under sugar cane cultivation has steadily decreased note it asks for the correct statements please have a look at the options please note as mentioned this question is from 2019 and it asks for the last 5 years so we can say 2014 to 2019 also it specifically mentions about kharif crops now consider this table this table has been sourced from the agricultural statistics report of 2018 this report is available on the agricultural ministry website note among the major crops food grain crops account for the largest production area also among all the crops rice accounts for the largest production area which stood at 39.54 million hectares so the statement one is correct the second statement compares the area of production of jowar and that of oil seeds note the major oil seeds in india include groundnut mustard soya bean and sunflower there are around 9 major oil seeds which are cultivated in india observe while the nine oil seeds accounted for 26.48 million hectares jowar accounted only for about 2.23 so from this it is very clear that the statement 2 is wrong because the area under oil seeds is much bigger than area under jowar also based on common sense it would be easy to decipher that the area under oil seeds which consists of around nine major crops is very likely to be more than that under a single crop like jowar given that jowar is not the predominant food grain in india now consider the third statement which compares the area under cotton cultivation and that of sugar cane note sugar cane and cotton are both important cash crops in india an analysis of this table reveals that the area under cotton is larger than the area under sugar cane so statement 3 is also correct now the last statement it says area under sugar cane cultivation has steadily decreased please note it mentions steadily sugar cane is a predominant cash crop generally the cultivation of such cash crops increases over time given the commercialization of agriculture so the statement which says it has steadily decreased prima facie appears to be wrong in fact during the period mentioned 2014 to 2019 the area under sugar cane cultivation fluctuated but there was no steady decrease as stated in the question so statement 4 is also wrong that leaves us with option a 1 and 3 only please go through the other major crops in india note while this table is from the 2018 report the broad trend as represented by this table continues to remain relevant even during present times moving on to the fact of the day river interlinking projects now let's understand the context this article from today's the hindu notes the gujarat state government scrapping the par tapi narmada river link project this project was planned to be executed in southern gujarat and maharashtra regions this project has been shelved by the state government amidst strong protest by tribal communities in this region 
So in this context, let us understand a few basic facts related to river interlinking in India. River interlinking was proposed as early as 1850s by the British irrigation engineers. Post-independence, in the 1980s, we had something known as the National Perspective Plan. The National Perspective Plan gave rise to the formation of the National Water Development Agency. This agency was looking after the proposals for river interlinking in India. Recently, there has been the proposal from the Union Government to set up the National Interlinking of Rivers Authority. This body is proposed to replace the National Water Development Agency. It is proposed to be an umbrella body for all river interlinking projects in India. It will function as an independent autonomous body for planning, financing as well as implementation of the river interlinking projects. Let's understand some of the major river interlinking projects proposed. The Ken Betwa interlinking project was one of the first projects to take off. It involves transferring the surplus water from the Kend River to the Betwa River. Note, both Ken and Betwa are tributaries of the Yamuna River. The Partapi Narmada River link project is this. Then we have the Manas Sankoj Tista Ganga project. And when it comes to peninsular India, there are proposals to interlink Mahanadi and the Godavari River systems. The recent union budget also pushed forward for river interlinking projects of the Godavari Krishna, Krishna Pennar as well as the Pennar Kaveri. Once executed, these three projects will help link two of the biggest rivers in peninsular India that is the Godavari and the Kaveri. Also please go through other proposed projects. While going through this project, the emphasis should be on the river system as well as the associated states. That is all for today. Thank you for being with us.